Good day everyone. This is Miss Michelle Joy. I am the social studies teacher of grade 7, 8, and 9 students, bilingual program of Sarasas Pitaya School. Welcome to our week 5 online learning discussion. Let's proceed now. So class, we are now on our week 5 online learning discussion and this is our subject, social studies. And for this week, we have three topics. Letter A, we have religion. Letter B, economy. Letter C, government. And these are the 10 words that we will be encountering in our next slides. So just to let you know, class, that these 10 words, I have chosen these words from your social studies book. And if you cannot understand the meaning of the following words, you can always check the meaning on your dictionary or you can Google them. Now, if you want to understand more of these words, you can always go to your Google account and please drop me a message and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So you can repeat after me for your reading skills. Letter A, religion. Letter B, guideline. Letter C, good did letter d economy letter e currency letter f tax letter g product letter h government letter i democracy and letter j society so class if you can remember in our week four we have the five social institutions of thailand and we have already discussed the first two social institutions last week. And now in this week, we are going to study the three more social institutions in Thailand. So the first one we are going to study for this week is about religion. So we all know that in Thailand, your religion is Buddhism. So what is religion? So religion is a good friend when having no one to turn to. When people face problems and have no idea how to sort them out, they could follow their religion's guidelines to find the answer. Do you do that class? Do you follow the guidelines of Buddhism so you can find a solution to your problem? Next, religions help remind people of doing good deeds and being kind to one another. This helps make a peaceful society. Now, the last one, the religious places are where ceremonies, cultures, and arts are well conserved and passed on to the next generation. So class, religion is very important for us, not only for, for us to follow something, but for us to find inner peace, but for us to be a good person, but for us to do good deeds. Because when you have a religion, you have beliefs. And when you have beliefs, you follow these beliefs, of course, to make you a better person. That's why you have religion class, to make you a better person, to find inner peace and to find inner happiness. That's the purpose of having a religion. And of course, um, we have different religions in the world and we have to respect every religion that we have because their belief is their beliefs, their, uh, our beliefs is our beliefs and it is a way of showing respect if we just let them do what they believe so that they will let us do what we believe in. What is economics? The typical first-year student walks into his first economics class with very little idea of what economics is. He might have heard something like, Economics is the study of money, or Economics is another word for accounting, or Economics is hard, don't take that class. But none of those are true. Economics is the study of the use of scarce resources that have alternative uses, that's the classic definition of economics. Basically, there are people, and people need resources to fulfill their desires. These resources cannot be infinite, but the desires can be, so people need to make choices about how to use their scarce resources. Economists study these choices. All economic questions fall into one of two categories, 
positive and normative. Positive economics describes what is, and normative economics argues for what ought to be. So a question like, why do people use money, is a positive question, and should people use money, is a normative question. A general rule of thumb is that if your economic model has no value judgments, it's positive economics. Whereas if it does have value judgments, it's normative economics. Since to tell someone what he ought to do, you first have to judge what is best for him. Economics is also divided into microeconomics and macroeconomics. Microeconomics studies the behavior of individual agents and markets, while macroeconomics studies the behavior of the entire economy. Economists also have their own branch of statistics called econometrics that specialize to analyzing economic data. Since economic data usually comes from the real world and not from controlled experiments, econometrics faces mathematical challenges that other fields might not. The tools economists have developed to study human behavior have broad uses outside of what we would traditionally consider economics. Economists study not only markets, but things like crime, war, the family, religion, culture, politics, law, and even genetics. That's why it's not unusual to see papers by psychologists, sociologists, criminologists, political scientists, anthropologists, biologists, neuroscientists, or legal scholars being co-authored by economists. So class, the second uh, discussion that we are going to have is about economy. So what is economy? By the way, economy is the fourth social institution in Thailand. So economy is a system in which people exchange products and services. This could refer to manufacturing, distributing, selling, and consuming. So it involves the seller and the consumer. It involves the manufacturer and the producer. And it involves a lot of people class. Also the people who will distribute the goods and also the people who give services and also the people who will sell their products. Okay, and the people who will use what they sell. So a lot of people in society work to run this system. And there are lots of things they have to agree upon. Like what? Currency or money. Taxes. So if you are doing business, you have to pay tax. And uh, that's why when we buy at 7-Eleven or any store, you can always see their VAT or value added tax, which is 7%. And that is also part of economy. And the last one is product is standardization. Next, it is where and how grown-ups make use of their knowledge and experiences to earn money for themselves and for their family. Of course, uh, that's why we have businessmen, businesswomen, because this is where they get their money, okay? In able to feed their family or to buy the things that their family needs, okay? It provides different kind of work which require different types of skills and this is basically known as service. Class, we get paid for many things. Like me, uh, Miss Michelle Joy, I am being paid by the school because I am giving you my service. I am teaching you. But then let's say, for example, I'm going to sell something like, for example, a pen. I'm going to sell a pen. Then you are buying my product. And in exchange to that, you are going to pay me money. So I did not give you any skills that I have, but instead I give you product. So this one is called uh, product. But when I give you something that I have, like my knowledge, then I am giving you my services. So these are all basically parts of economy. What is government? We often hear that the government makes all the decisions or that the government will build schools and hospitals. But do we know what government really means and what it actually is responsible for? Governance is the form or system of rule by which a state or nation is organized and governed. This happens through a system made up of laws and institutions. Government normally consists of legislators, administrators and arbitrators. Legislators create and pass state law. Administrators 
implement state law and arbitrators enforce state law. There are many different forms of government. In South Africa, we have a democratic form of government. The South African government is made up of a group of representatives that we elect through periodically held elections. We refer to it as a representative government. Democratic government is further characterized by the separation and balance of powers. This means that the democratic political system is divided into three branches, the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. Each branch deals with a different aspect of governance. The legislature is also known as parliament and consists of the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces. It is where laws are debated and passed. The second branch of government, the executive, is represented by the president, deputy president and the cabinet of ministers. It administers and implements the laws of the legislative and the court decisions of the judiciary. The word government often refers to the executive alone as it governs the country and takes care of the day-to-day -day running of the state. The judiciary is the third branch of the democratic system and is represented by the courts and their staff. It interprets the law, decides disputes and applies the constitution in the name of the state. Chapters 4, 5 and 8 of our constitution lay out the structure, roles and responsibilities of the three branches of the South African government. Democracies are not only characterized by the separation but also by the balance of powers. Balance aims to ensure that no one division of government has all power. In other words, the separation and balance of powers provides a vital system of checks and balances. The three branches control each other and ensure that power is shared. The main purpose is to prevent the abuse of power. In South Africa, we have three levels of government, the national, provincial and local spheres of government. Each sphere has its own powers and operates separately. However, the three spheres are interrelated and interdependent and are all equally important to ensuring that the country is well governed. The three spheres of government are entrenched in our constitution in Chapter 3, titled Cooperative Government. While not usually part of the government structures, in South Africa traditional leadership is another institution of governance that plays a role in the lives of many people. The South African Constitution officially recognizes, in its Chapter 12, the institution, status and role of traditional leadership. Act 41 of 2003 also deals with traditional leaders within the country's governance framework. This Act outlines the structure, functions and responsibilities of traditional leadership groups and how they work with government. Traditional leaders may carry out an advisory role to government on matters relating to traditional leadership and customary law, under the condition of operating within the framework of the constitution and common law. Now to summarize, what is a government? Governance is the system of rule by which a state is organized and governed. A government is a group of people and institutions that manage and govern a state. Democratic government is characterized by the separation and balance of powers into three branches of government. In simple terms, the legislature creates and passes state law, the executive implements state law, and the judiciary enforces it. Representative democracies are formed by means of elections. Periodically held elections allow us ordinary citizens to determine who should manage and govern the country and therefore represent our interests. So class, the last topic that we have and the last social institution of Thailand is about the government. What is government and why government is important in the country? So a government is a group of people that governs a community or unit. It sets and administers public policy and exercises executive. 
It has to protect people from threats. It provides facilities including infrastructures so that everyone can work and live a happy life. What is democracy? It is a type of government described as government of people, by the people, and for the people. In a democracy, everyone takes part in making the laws that everyone has to obey. It needs its government to sort out conflicts or public problems by making laws and enforcing them in order to make safe and peaceful country. So government class is very important because the government do things for the people, give services to the people in April for the people to live a good and happy life, uh, a life that is not difficult for people, a life that is peaceful. So that is the main reason why people choose the kind of government that they have. I mean, people choose the leader that will be their government so that if you have a good leader, tendency is you will have a good country. If you have a bad leader, tendency is you will be having a bad country. So in democracy, people can vote and choose the leader, the type of leader that they want. And if they do not want their leader anymore, if they think their leader is not doing his job or her job, then they can actually change him, impeach him. So Society, it needs government to sort conflicts or public problems. So society basically composed of many families. So class, uh, if we have the government, it will make a peaceful living for all of us because we have rules to follow. We cannot just do bad things to other people because we will be punished by the government. And not only that, government provides services for the people in able to have a good and peaceful country, country that has no war at all. So class, we now come to the end of our online learning week five. And as you can notice, every week I am giving you activity to answer because I want to know if you fully understand our topic or not. And as I am always telling you, if you don't understand something or if you want to share your opinion, you can always go to our Google account, drop me a message, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So for this activity, I have given you five questions, and I really hope that you will um, do your best so you can answer these questions perfectly. Goodbye! So class, that is the end of our online learning discussion for week 5 and I hope that you did understand our topic for this week. I can't wait to see you guys next month. Stay safe. Bye everyone!